السلام عليكم اهلا بكم في معهد دمشق اليوم سندرس عن ال irregular verbs with hamza so today we'll be learning about irregular verbs with hamza so hiya bina ila ad-dars let's go to the lesson the hamza can be an enigmatic letter and the nearest analogy in english is the apostrophe so it's closer to the apostrophe that we have in english so which we have in arabic as hamza in both cases there is uncertainty as to when and how to use it even among the native speakers the apostrophe causes more errors in english than virtually anything else and the hamza probably has the dubious distinction in arabic whereas in english we ask ourselves should the apostrophe come before the s or after the s so when you review this video it is always worth reminding yourself that you're not alone in finding the hamza sometimes elusive so go through the general guidelines but be prepared to refer to the tables regularly used in the videos the hamza itself is considered a consonant not a vowel as pronounced as the short glottal stop many verbs have hamza as one of the root letters it can be one of the th three root letters and is found in some some common verbs like the apostrophe the rules such as they exist for hamza are more concerned where to place it than how to pronounce it verbs with hamza as one of the root letters are mainly regular the changes that occur in the letter that carries the hamza so there are some guidelines regarding writing it the simplest way to predict how the particular pattern will be written is to look at the pattern for the regular verbs we referred to the first video of this playlist and then apply the general rules on the following uh, task remember that there are exceptions and alternatives for individual verbs check the tables in this video and in the relevant videos for the derived forms or some other patterns so these are the general rules for verbs with hamza as one of the root letters if the hamza at the beginning of the verb is written on an alif for example akhadha yakhudu akhadha means he took and akala yakulu akulu means they ate if a pattern means you need to write two alifs then these are combined as one with the badda sign over it pronounced as a long a uh, akhudu uh, akhudu uh, i take instead of akhud otherwise the letter carrying the hamza tends to relate to the vowel before the hamza dhamma before hamza written as vowel kathara before hamza written on ya without dots such as this fatha before hamza written on alif if the hamza has no vowel before it the letter before ha has a sakun over it then the rules above default to the vowel over the hamza itself yes alu as ala yes alu he asks yes alu now we have some examples qarana masrahiyatan arabiyatan fil fas we read qarana we read masrahiya arabiya an arabic play masrahiya arabiya fil fasl in the class sa'altu al mudarrisu sawalan an al muallif i asked sa'altu i asked al mudarris the teacher sawalan 
the question a question عن المعلف about the author قال إن المعلف قاتب المصريح مصرحية في فص سبعينات قال إن المعلف كاتب المصرحية مصرحية مصرحية you can repeat that قال إن المعلف قاتب رود مصرحية في فص سبعينات he said that the author wrote the play in the 70s فص سبعينات لأنه سايم من عمله في البنك because he was fed up with his work in the bank don't worry if these rules can be complicated in the basic tenses there are few other irregularities and the majority of patterns are written with a hamza or an alif if you refer to the tables you will start to get a fee good feel for how to write these verbs look at the general rules in conjugation with the later videos if you need to find out how the verbs with hamza behave in the derived forms or other patterns so we have three verbs right here with the hamza as the root akhadha sa'ala bitaw batu 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 akhadha sa'ala batu so ana akhadhtu anta akhadhta anti akhadhti huwa akhadha hiya akhadhat ana sa'altu anta sa'alta anti sa'alti هو سعل هي سعلت أنا بتوت أنت بتوت أنت بتوتي هو بتوء هي بتوءت نحن أخذنا أنتم أخذتم أنتن أخذتن هم أخذوا هن أخذنا نحن سعلنا أنتم سألتم أنتن سألتن هم سألوا هن سألنا نحن بتونا أنتم بتوتم أنتن بتوتن هم بتوؤ هن بتوؤنا and now we'll move towards the present tense أخذ يأخذ سأل يسأل بات بات او بات او جبت سو so, انا اخذ اخذ uh, انت تاخذ انت تاخذين هو ياخذ هي تاخذ انا اسال انت تسال انت تسالين هو يسال هي تسال أنا أبت أنت تبت أنت تبتئين هو يبت هي تبت Now we'll move towards the plurals نحن نأخذ نحن نسأل نحن نأخذ أنتم تأخذون أنتن تأخذن هم يأخذون هن يأخذن نحن نسأل أنتم تسألون أنتن تسألن هم يسألون هن يسألن نحن نبت أنتم تبتؤون أنتن تبتؤون هم يبتؤون هن يبتؤون So remember that in the present tense the middle vowel will vary as it does with the regular verbs refer to the first video in the case of the verbs with Hamza as the second or third root letter this could affect the spellings although a middle fatha with the hamza carried by an alif is by far the most common form so now here are the summary of the verbs with hamza irregularities in these verbs are mainly concerned with the spelling which later carries with hamza there are some general rules which help to determine how the Hamza should be written and there are also exceptions and alternatives which need to be individually absorbed over time so this is all from today's lesson 
and uh, I hope that you like the video moving forward we'll be taking on the derived forms of the verbs so see you on the next lesson Ma'as Salam